Hey folks, when I reached out for my Q&A videos, many of you asked me questions about history. I decided to mine a few for regular video topics, but here are some quick answers to a few of the other historical questions. Tamana Zaman asks if it's true that William Shakespeare never existed. As far as the consensus of most people who study the Bard, Tamana, you can be safely assured he was a real person. More than enough contemporary documents from different sources confirm his existence. If it is a hoax, it would be one of the most sophisticated ever pulled off. Some have accused him of not being the author of many of his famous works as far back as the 19th century. Over 80 other people have been suspected of being the true author of Shakespeare's works. Most famous is Sir Francis Bacon. The case historians make is that there are no contemporary accusations that Shakespeare did not write the plays, and all copies identify him as the author. The coolest thing, though, that they used to ID him was something called a stylistic study. People write in unique styles, like a fingerprint, and Shakespeare's words choice and sentence structure hints to a profile completely unique to himself. Josh from Native Lang asks, who was history's most famous historian? Well, Josh, by the way, guys, if you like what I do here, but are also into linguistics, Josh runs Native Lang, an amazing animated linguistics channel. Check out his Great Moments in the History of Writing, or Thoughts Pill, as it's actually called, series, for a great 47 minutes of educational stuff. Now to his question. I think that many historians, maybe not all, but many, would say Herodotus. His book, The Histories, is considered by many to be the West's first history book. It's a Greek record of the world of Greece, North Africa, and the Middle East in around 440 BCE. It's the only in-depth record we have of the rise of the Achaemenid Persian Empire and the famous wars they had with Greece. By today's standard, the book was largely pulled from his butt, hearsay, and a hefty dose of propaganda, but it sets a standard in chronicling the events of people just beyond the mythical. Stefan Atli Thorvaldsson asks a couple questions. One was, what was the first country? Well, this is a difficult question, surprisingly. Countries are very young or very old, depending on your definition. You might argue that it was the first unnamed city. Some say this even predates agriculture, but most do not. Most historians put this somewhere in the Neolithic age. If it's the first state, well, people argue that the development of the modern state was a process of moving from allegiance to particular sovereigns to the creation of an intangible political entity. This could be as early as the first Italian city-states or as late as the early modern period in Europe. We could also just go with the simple answer. When Europeans decided what a state was going to be at the Treaty of Westphalia in 1648, it ended decades of bloody war in Europe by stating that all states held the right to national self-determination. They described this as territorial sovereignty and without foreign agents at the domestic level. Stefan's second question was, why does Quebec speak French? You hear a little about this in the video I did on Soliloquy's channel here, but the TLDW version is that the French were the first Europeans to colonize Quebec. It wasn't until the Seven Years' War, or French and Indian War for you Americans, that modern Quebec would fall into the hands of the British. The Quebecois were largely poor and lived in a semi-feudal life, so they didn't often assimilate or move around until later in the 19th century. Today, French as a language is a key part of the French Quebecois identity, and they make great efforts to preserve it in order to ensure their identity survives. This includes a special government organization called the Office Quebecois de la Langue Française, or the OQLF, that sometimes gets itself in a bit of trouble for its crackdowns. One of the more recent ones is Pastagate, where they gave a stern warning to an Italian restaurant for having the word pasta on the menu. That's enough for now. Thanks for the questions, and if you want me to answer something about myself, the channel, or history, just comment down below. And of course, if you haven't, subscribe to find out what I make my next episode of Step Back. Much larger than we thought. Partly to blame is that many innovations came from Mesoamerica, or modern-day Mexico. But their geographic isolation meant that- Hey Tristan, maybe the craziest thing about this Iowa caucus is the fact that none of the delegates to the National Party conventions will be selected on caucus night. You heard me right. All this-